Okay, I'm obsessed with stuff like this. I don't know about you, but I completely like nerd out on this like productivity, like inbox zero type stuff. So yeah, I wanna talk about that today because I found that when my inbox, this is when I was a teacher and it was really relevant to me, but I found that when my inbox was like completely flooded, it was really reflected of my mental space. And that if my inbox got really overwhelmed, it was reflected that I was already overwhelmed and that's why I didn't get to it. Um, so I, I was a teacher during the whole time of COVID. When we went online, I was getting like hundreds of emails a day literally and I hit inbox zero every day because I have some really great strategies I've tried so many things and some of the stuff works and some of it really does not work so I want to take you through my system so yeah by the end of this you're gonna have a really simple way to reach inbox zero it's just one method it's not having 18 folders like I'll just go ahead and, <laughs> and tell you that because I feel like that's most people's strategy with inbox zero so you're gonna have like a really easy way just one method for how to reach inbox zero and it is totally worth it so I'm gonna take you through um, the strategies and kind of my process and things I learned along the way until we get kind of to that amazing method that I am obsessed with now so I think everybody probably has the experience when you start a job like an office job or teaching a job that requires you to check email a lot you have this experience that you're you're like crap this is a ton of emails okay I'm gonna get this done and when you kind of first make the commitment to inbox zero I was checking like five times a day it was like okay I got three more emails boom they're gone okay I got three more emails boom they're gone I was checking five times a day and I think a lot of people will just readily see what the problem with that is the problem with that is that it there's so much transition time I think um Experts have estimated that there's 20 minutes of transition time when you're switching between two different types of tasks. And so you're still doing it, but your brain's not really in the zone to do it for like 20, 20 more minutes. And so since email is kind of different from a lot of different types of tasks, it creates so much transition time throughout the day. You're thinking 20 minutes times five times a day, however many times you're transitioning, it really becomes not worth it. The other kind of less thing that people talk about is that maybe like in the case, like I was teaching, I would get an email from a parent during the whole time of COVID and they were like ticked off about something. Now, if you're gonna get emails like that that affect your emotional state, it makes you so much less productive. So I was like, you know what, I, I gotta do something. I gotta do something with this. I'm like, this is not working. So this kind of br brings me to the first thing that so I naturally I kind of decided I'm only gonna check once a day. But then the issue that I encountered was that I decided I was gonna check it once a day in the morning. And for me, I am so productive in the morning. I don't feel the most creative in my morning, but I am productive. I will just like hammer stuff out. And so I found that that was actually the kind of, that time of day was valuable real estate that I was wasting on email. And so since email's not a, a big priority to me, it was useless for me to spend such, a, but I'm so actionable, it was useless to spend that time on email. So I decided, okay, I'm not gonna check it then, I'm gonna check it in the afternoon. And that became great. This is something that I actually stuck with for myself and like when I'm most alert and stuff. And since email was not a huge priority to me, I started checking it during my afternoon prep. It was like 1 p.m. once a day. And it was kind of nice because it gave people time to have responded to me. It also wasn't kind of wasting that valuable real estate when I'm so productive. So then comes the big issue that a lot of people encounter. So you're going through, as soon as you reach, as soon as you initiate the goal of wanting to achieve inbox zero, you're gonna come across this problem very soon. There are emails that you're gonna get that you are not supposed to reply to, but you need the information to. So like an example is, my principal would send an email, hey, we're gonna do standardized testing in three months, here's your password, you're gonna need this in three months. So then you're sitting there with, okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do with, I don't need to, this is a group email, I'm not gonna to respond to the group email, okay, etiquette, one, do not respond a bunch to the group email. But I'm like, what am I gonna do with it? Because I need this, what am I gonna do with it? So then this is what everyone tries to do with Inbox Zero. They decide that they're gonna create this beautiful folder system. Okay, so I'm gonna organize it and I'm gonna say, okay, here's a folder my principal sent me this, so I'm gonna keep this here. I'm gonna do one for parents, one for students, and I have, for all these different categories of senders that might send me stuff, I was like, I'll have this folder system. And I thought that was gonna be great, and that worked for what probably I had two days. underestimated was that my principal sent tons of emails. I was like, if I have a folder for everything my principal sends and everything parents send, it is gonna be filled with hundreds of things by the end of the week. I was like, this is not gonna work. And I was like, what I would end up doing is I would just search it anyways. Like if I needed an old email, I would just search like some words that I knew were in the email anyway. So I was like, this folder system is really not becoming useful. So I was like, okay, I'll do a different folder system. This is what I'll do. The folder system will be stuff that I don't need and things that I will need later. And then I'll just remember every day, I'll check the will need later to see if something's in there. But I think you can see, you're not gonna remember every day to check this will need later folder. And it's just annoying to have to go into this folder to have to do that. So I quickly was like, I'm not sure if this folder thing is, <laughs> is really working. And I was like, that's the only strategy I've ever heard people talk about when they talk about inbox zero. What am I gonna okay. do? This is where I came down to my great system that is so easy and I absolutely love it. Okay, this is what you do. When you get an email, 
you determine, am I going to take action on this now, later, or never? And if you are never needed to, you never need to reply to it, you never will need to look at it ever again. I had one folder that I just called reference. That's the only folder I ever had because I would find that occasionally I would need to go back and look something. So I began to never really delete emails, especially if a parent, you know, might lie or something. I need things on record. So if I don't need to do anything with it, I'll just put it in the reference folder immediately. The other categories of things are things I need to act on now or things I need to act on later. So I need to reply to it now, like someone emails me like, hey, can you tell me what my student's grade is or something? I was do do do, here we go, respond to them. And then I instantly put it in reference. So it, it's pretty easy for what to do if you need to do something with them now. It's kind of easy to know what to do with them. You just reply, get rid of it. The other category is harder to know what to do with. So my principal sends an email that says, hey, here's your password that you'll need three months from now. So I need it, but I need it later. So anytime you need something later, you need to decide when am I going to need this? And then I snooze it for that time. So in Gmail, there's a snooze button, the most genius thing ever. So if I don't need this until three months from now, I snooze it for three months from now because I want my inbox to be at zero. I want it to be clutter free. I want my brain to be clutter free, but I also want the stuff to be there when I need it. So I'll just snooze it and send it to myself that time. It's genius. This is the only method I ever do. I have a reference folder and I snooze things. That's basically all I ever do. Occasionally, the other thing I will do is let's say I got an email from my principal, same sort of deal. Hey, here's your password. You'll need this three months from now, but it's paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs long. Let's say he sends, which this happens sometimes. Let's say they send out an email that's like 15 paragraphs long. I read the email and then if I were to snooze it, I'm going to have to read this whole paragraph again if I don't remember things. So I'm like, I don't want to do that. So what I would do then is I would paraphrase it. Okay. Here's the dates, here's the times, here's the password, the three things I need. And I would just compose a new email to myself. Okay, Alexis, at this date, you're gonna, at this time, you're gonna need this password. And I would schedule send it for the correct time. So I would put the principal's email in reference, or I may also snooze it to myself just in case I miss something, but then I would paraphrase it and send it to myself. And that becomes such a helpful strategy. So this helped in so many scenarios. Like, for example, um, I had a parent email me one time and they said, hey, we're thinking about putting my son in a lower math class. Can you update us in a month about what his progress is? So you say to yourself, oh, I need to remember, should I, and some people would be like, do I need to put this on a calendar? What do I need to do? I would reply, say, yep, great, of course I will. Then I would mark the emails unread and snooze it to myself for a month later. That way I get the reminder for a month later. Hey, I need to update this parent on their student's progress. And that became so great because anytime there was a strategy, it's like, you need to remember to check this folder every day. It's not gonna happen. You know what I am checking every day? my inbox. And so instead of putting it in a folder that's acting as another inbox, let's just snooze it and put it back in the inbox where it belongs. And so I felt like the strategy was so great. Like, especially if you get tons, if you're in a job where you get tons of emails, I think the strategy is so impactful. So yeah, I nerd out about this stuff. I don't know if you nerd out about this sort of thing too. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.